Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 Blueprint tutorial. Uh, we're back working on that Kitten Cannon clone series that uh, we've been working on. Uh, if you haven't seen the last video, go ahead and check that out. Uh, you can see it at the end of the video, but I'll also put a link in the description for you guys. Uh, but what we're going to do uh, is first show off what we did last time. Uh, basically, we made that power meter, and you really click on it, and it basically stops. <laughs> and it animates up and down, changes from green to red, sets a power meter value, all that good stuff. What we're going to be doing in this video is setting up the actual cannon. So if you can see here, there's the cannon that rotates from 0 to 60 degrees on its relative axis. And then when you click on it, it stops, kind of like the power meter. So we're going to set that up now. So to start, uh, we're going to need to import some textures that I've already created. So let's go into our textures folder, go import. We're going to import the cannon base, the cannon wheel, and the cannon arrow. Save that, uh, but what we're, we're going to do now, uh, since we are working within Paper 2D, we want to go ahead and make some sprites. So let's go to our main folder, let's create a new folder called Sprites. Let's right click. I believe it's under Materials, no, it's under Miscellaneous. Do Sprite. We're going to do Sprite underscore uh, cannon base. Double click on that, go back into our texture folder, let's grab the cannon base, and just for the source texture, plug that up. Like that. Uh, it's pixelated just because I made it that way, I wanted to get a nice pixel feel. Uh, and that's all we need to do for that one. So now we need to do the same thing for the cannon wheel and the cannon arrow. So let's do the cannon wheel next. Let's go into our sprites. Uh, we'll select the base, we can do control W. Usually doesn't work in the first try, so let's just right click and do duplicate. Call the sprite underscore uh, cannon wheel. Double click on that. Go back into our textures, grab that wheel. Replace the source texture with that. I believe the issue here, I believe, is it 128? Oh, no, it's 512 by 512, this texture. We can save that. And now for the arrow. <clears throat> what we can do, uh, let's make another sprite. Sprite and score uh, cannon arrow. Go into our textures, grab the arrow, and then plug that up. Uh, I believe this is uh, 256 by 256. Yeah, there we go. Save that. Uh, but what we want to go ahead and do uh, is make the arrow a little bit opaque or less opaque, I should say. Uh, so to do that, what we can do is make a material for it. So let's make a new folder, call it material. And we can just right click, material, we'll do matte underscore cannon arrow. Double click that guy. And now let's go into our textures, let's grab the cannon arrow. And then we can hold down the T key and left click, and it creates a texture sample using that texture that we just created. And now what we can do is uh, right click. Uh, we can actually, let's not make it a scalar value. Let's just make it, uh, let's hold down one and left click. And then we'll set this value to about 0.5. And all we need now is a multiply. And we're going to multiply that 0.5 by the actual alpha of this texture. And then under the matte cannon arrow, under the main hub here, we're going to change it from opaque to, to translucent. Plug the multiply output to opacity. And then under texture sample, uh, under the all, we'll put that under base color, and then we should have an opaque arrow, which is perfect. So you can save that. It takes just a little bit to save. And then we can change its default material to that material we just made. So let's just grab that, plug that up, and now we see that it's opaque. So now that we have all three of those sprites created, we can now create the blueprint for it. So let's right click blueprint class actor, we'll do BP underscore cannon. Double click that. I uh, like what we always do under add component. First thing we can add is a scene component, call it root. Compile and save that. Uh, let's first get our cannon base. So let's go into sprites. Time and base, and add that component. Scroll down to paper sprite. 
I'm going to call this cannon base. We don't need to rotate it. We don't need to do anything else but what we just did. Uh, except let's change its collision. Uh, let's uncheck generate overlap events and uncheck and make sure it's doing no collision. Uh, next, what we're going to do is grab our cannon wheel. Add it like we just did for the actual cannon base. Call it cannon wheel. And let's just drag it onto the base just so they're attached. As you can see, the scaling's a little off. Uh, so what we can do is change it to uh, 0.5, should be fine. Uh, we also want to change its location. Uh, let's change it to 1 in the Y. That way it's in front. Position it as you see fit. Uh, that works for me, but let's also change the collision. Make sure it's not doing any overlapping and make sure it has no collision at all. And last but not least, let's add our arrow. Call it cannon arrow. Attach it to the base. And then just position this as necessary. And then we also want to rotate it. This looks like it's about right. Let's uncheck. Uh, our degree snapping, just so we can get as accurate as possible. That looks good. And like usual, let's uncheck overlap events to make sure it has no collision. Now what we're going to do is give it collision, just because again we're going to click on it and that's going to lock in the degrees. So, let's do a box collision. We're going to name this cannon collision. Drag it up to the cannon base so that it's attached to it. And let's try to fit it as best as we can. We're going to do the whole thing. Uh, that works for me. Make sure it has generated hit events and make sure it is a block all. And we can move this forward just a little bit. Compile, save. Uh, now we're at the point where we can just dump this into our level. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, let's check back our degrees here so it snaps. So now if we play, now it's not animating, it's not doing anything just yet. Uh, but one thing we need to, we need to undo uh, we want to make sure the cannon wheel, uh, let's make sure it's not parented here, and let's make sure the collision's not parented to the base. Uh, the reason why is because we're going to be animating the base, and we don't want those to animate with it. Um, but one nice thing we need to do is add a text render. So let's type in text. We're going to call this degrees display, because we want to display the actual degrees that we're rotating, just so the player knows. So we'll place it uh, right about here should be okay. Let's make its world size maybe about 40. We want it to be relatively big. And we're not going to parent this to anything because, again, we don't want it to be rotating. Um, so now we can look. And everything looks pretty good so far. No complaints. So let's go ahead and add some behavior. Uh, so let's go back into the blueprint. Let's go into the event graph. Uh, kind of like the power meter, everything uh, with the rotation is going to be done and dealt with. Uh, through uh, the actual uh, timeline. Uh, so first, let's start with an event that begin play, because uh, overall what we're going to need a reference to is that power meter we created in the last video. Uh, so from event begin play, let's do get all actors of class. Let's type in power with BP power meter, and then from the out actors, let's just do get. Read everything default here, and then from that, cast it to the power meter. And then from here, we can promote that to a variable. And we'll call it power meter reference. Now that we have a reference to that, we can actually move on to our uh, canon rotation timeline. So let's right click all the way at the bottom, is an add timeline. We call this rotate canon animation.
And kind of like the other uh, animation, it's going to be a you know three point animation curve, zero, one, zero. We're going to make this one two seconds. We're going to set it to loop. And we're going to have it auto play and use last key. And this is going to be a float track. And we'll call this rotation value. And we can just add our keyframes anywhere we want and then just manually change their values. So the first one's going to be at 0, 0. Next one's going to be at 1 and 1. And the other one's going to be at 2, 0. We can compile, go back into our event graph. And now we have to deal with the actual rotation. So the first thing we need to do is get the default rotation of our actual cannon. We want to make sure we lock that in as a variable. Uh, so let's get a cannon base and then get relative rotation. And then we can just promote that to a variable and we'll call that default cannon rotation. And then plug that up. And the reason why is because we want to have a base value for our rotation so that we know what to interpolate from and to in our actual animation. So now what we can do is grab our rotation value, do a lerp, and it's going to be a rotator. Uh, we're not, we're going to leave shortest path unchecked. And what we're going to do now is get the default cannon rotation, plug that up, and then how we're going to rotate it is this direction, kind of like this. And that's our pitch. And that's going to be the P value. So we're going to make this 60. We want it to go 60 degrees. And now what we can do is grab our cannon base, set its relative rotation, put the return value into its set here, plug that into update, and we're done. Uh, so we should see it animate. So let's see if that worked. So we're seeing it doing that correctly. Uh, so now there's no clicking or anything. Uh, it's kind of interlapping with the text here. So let's just go into our viewport and move that over. Uh, but now what we can do is actually set that text so it displays that degree. Uh, so let's go back into our event graph. Let's grab our degrees display. We'll do a set text. We're going to have to do a couple of the pens here, uh, but let's first plug it up. Now, from the value, we'll do an append. In A, it's going to be the word degrees, space, colon, space. And then from B, we're going to make another append. In A, it's going to be the actual pitch value. So let's grab our cannon base, get relative uh, rotation, and then we can break this struct here and just grab pitch. We'll do a round and plug that up into A. Let's just organize this a little bit. And then for B, it's going to be the actual degree symbol. So to do that, you have to do Alt and then 248. So let's put go into B, pull down Alt and do 248, let go, and now we have our degree symbol. So now if we play, it's showing our degrees. So now we're seeing a lot of inter interlapping here. So let's go ahead and fix that one last time. I'll just drag this guy up. Yeah, let's actually put it down for now. So that's working as intended. Uh, so now what we want, want to do is actually create the click of it so that it stops rotating. Uh, so to do that, let's go into our event graph. And then under Canon Collision, let's right click, add event, input, mouse input, add on clicked. 
So what we need to do now, uh, kind of like what we did earlier uh, in the last tutorial, is do a flip flop. And then on the first A, we'll go into our components, grab our animation for the rotation, and set till it stop. And then we're going to create a new variable. We're going to call it B uh, Canon Angle Set. We'll make this public. Compile that. We're going to set that to true. And then what we're going to do is uh, get our Canon base. We'll do get relative rotation. Break that like we did before. Grab the pitch and promote that to a variable. And we'll call this a canon angle value. We'll make that public too, just for funsies. Plug that up, hit compile. Um, and then under uh, the B is where we're going to tell it uh, to play the rotation again. And depending on how you wanted to do, you could do play from start or just play. I'm just going to do just play. Plug that into B. Um, we forgot to set the actual angle set to true, so make sure that's the case. And then for this next part, we're going to set it to false. So let's compile, save, and let's see if this works. And it does. So we can lock both in. And then in the next tutorial, uh, it's going to be in the next one and the one after that, because uh, we're going to be creating a cannonball, and we're going to make sure we can set the launch behavior. Because at this point, we would want that cannonball to launch, and the camera would then follow. So we need to set all that up. So we're going to do that in the next tutorial. And uh, for now, I just want to say thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for checking out that blueprint tutorial. If you haven't already subscribed to the Dev and Level Design channel, either click on me or the subscribe button above to do so. Uh, if you like the video, make sure you actually click like, make sure you share it, comment more suggestions, any questions, anything like that. Um, as well as look to the right here and you'll see more videos, more blueprint examples, more blueprint tutorials with the Unreal Engine 4. Um, and again, I really hope you enjoy the content. We're going to do everything step by step to recreate that kitten pattern clone that I've been working on. Just so you guys know how to do it, just so you have references, because there's a lot of cool stuff that I've learned along the way. Uh, but for now, I want to say thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!